So Star Wars Outlaws is officially launching over the next 24 hours or so, or it might even be here for some of you who got the early access editions. And having finished the game myself, I must admit there is a lot of stuff I only figured out later on in the game that would have been super handy to know early on. So today we're going over 10 things I wish I knew sooner in Star Wars Outlaws. This video will be completely spoiler free as will all the content on this channel in the coming weeks. And so without wasting any time, let's get stuck right into it. Now, the first tip I have is actually to do with the combat and in my opinion you guys shouldn't be aiming down sight as much as you probably think. Usually when you're playing any shooter hip fire is generally seen as not overly accurate and aiming down sights will make you a lot more likely to land your shots but in this game the aim assist actually works slightly different with the hip fire aim assist being relatively strong whereas the ADS aim assist is still prevalent but it is just definitely a lot weaker and I've found that actually hip firing in most situations is going to lead to a lot more accuracy even though it's something that most people People probably won't do because like I said we are kind of hardwired to do the complete opposite from most of the shooters on the market. I've also found that when you are behind cover and you're crouched down if you hip fire Kay will pretty much do an animation where she will just slightly lean out of that cover meaning you're a lot harder to hit than if you are aimed down sights where you will just permanently sort of stand up from that cover or stand around the corner and so hip fire is really really solid in this game and it's something that I wish I knew a lot sooner because I only really figured that out after probably 10 or so hours of playtime. Now the next one is honestly pretty simple and I'm sure most of you guys would have figured this out for yourself but I actually didn't figure this out until maybe five or six hours into the game and to be honest that is completely on me being just a straight up potato of a human but I thought I would just mention it anyway in case some of you guys fall into the same trap now when you're selling items at any vendors to earn a few more credits and be able to buy some stuff for yourself there is actually an option down in the bottom right that says you can sell all of your valuables by simply pressing one button and that will just sell all of the stuff that isn't actually useful so some of the stuff you can sell you can also use it it's different materials for upgrading your ship or upgrading your blaster but anything in this game that is seen as a valuable it pretty much has no use it's just stuff that you can find and then sell to make yourself a profit so do not go through and individually sell these it is just a waste of time sell all of your valuables in that one single button press and then from there if you want to sell some materials at least you've gotten rid of all the stuff that you don't actually have any use for now something else I didn't figure out straight away and to be honest this was also probably on me because there is an audio cue that will let you know that there's something waiting on the ship for you but it doesn't really tell you where it is and that is this delivery crate that's in the sort of cargo area of the trail blazer now what this is for is that anytime you get given something in the game whether that is from any of the crime syndicates it is even where you'll find your pre-order bonuses if you guys pre-ordered and so anytime you get given something and you return to the trailblazer you'll be told that there is a delivery and this is where to find it I went about six or seven hours without actually getting the pre-order bonuses that I was given and so I was just running around with my base skin and stuff like that and once I found this I realized that I had like 10 different items in there and obviously the same goes as you sort of move up with each syndicate and get a better reputation they will give you rewards and so if you're not checking this delivery crate you're going to be kind of doing that reputation system for absolutely nothing at all so do not forget about that that's one that I think a lot of people will potentially miss now the next one is also something that I think a lot of people will miss because it doesn't really blatantly tell you in game and that's the fact that this game has transmog which for those who don't know is essentially a way that you can equip one skin that will have some bonuses for example but you can make it look like a different skin that you prefer when you're in the sort of outfit section of the game you can obviously just pick and choose whatever jackets and stuff that you want but down in the bottom right there is a button to change appearance so when you're hovering over the jackets or the pants for example if you press that button it will just keep the one that you have equipped but you can make it look like a different skin that you own for example maybe one of the items of clothing you have has some really good bonuses and you don't want to get rid of that but you really prefer the look of a different jacket or a different set of pants and so if that is the case you can essentially just equip both keeping those bonuses but also looking exactly how you want it to now before we go any further if you guys are interested in more star wars outlaws content and you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button as there is plenty more content on the way there is going to be pretty much daily content for as long as i possibly can and like i said pretty much all of it will be completely spoiler free unless I explicitly say so. Now the next tip I have is to do with the I guess metroidvania elements to this game. There are some certain things where you'll find something early in the game but you can't actually access it until you find a new ability and something to really help with remembering where you found 
good items that you can't access yet is the ability to annotate on the map. As you can see, there is the option to leave an annotation. It'll give you a bunch of different options for little icons that you can put there to kind of remind you of what it was. You can also even change the colors, which might suit if it's in a restricted area, or you could even have a mental note of which color you link with the more important items, for example. And so if you come across anything throughout this game that you know there's something in there, but you maybe can't access it yet, or maybe you just even want to come back later and get on with the main mission right now, well, you can annotate the map. And honestly, this has been a massive lifesaver for me as there is a heap of goodies that I've found that I wasn't able to access early on in the game. Now, something else I didn't notice straight away as well is that when you're using the electro binoculars, which you can access via your backpack, you can actually mark enemies with these as well. Meaning that if you're trying to plan out a mission and you need to be stealthy, for example, you can mark 10 enemies and unfortunately 10 is the maximum, but then that will place a triangle above their head and it will let you know where they are at all times, meaning you're not gonna accidentally go around a corner and there's an enemy there that you weren't aware of. So make the most of that. I believe it's just done by pressing R2 on the controller and I'm not too sure on PC, but it will have the keybind there anyway. And I've found that when you're doing any mission that kind of requires stealth and you have a good view of the area you need to be infiltrating, this is probably the best way to do those missions. Now, something else I definitely wish I knew earlier is to do with Nyx. And this is the ability to use Nyx to get the Bacta from dead enemies rather than getting it yourself. Now, I did know you could do that. It's not like I didn't know that that concept, but I'll be honest, it's just something that I wasn't doing nearly enough. I'd be behind a piece of cover with like one health left and I'd see a back to vial over to the left. And instead of sending Nyx, I'd just go, you know what? It's only like 10 meters away. I'll just run and get it. And as soon as I left cover, I'd end up getting shot. So whenever you see a back to vial and you are low on health, you can just stay behind cover, stay safe and send Nyx to get it because they won't shoot at Nyx or anything like that. He'll bring you back that back to and you can heal up safely behind cover. Now, the next one is also to do with Nyx and this is something that is mentioned in the game, but it's mentioned in a very intense part of the game. And I think a lot of people actually won't notice it because of the way that they present it. It's shown to you guys pretty early on in the game, but I found that there is a lot of different things going on and I only just managed to notice it because it's not made blatantly obvious. Nyx can actually distract cameras in this game. One thing that I found is that the cameras can be arguably more annoying than actual enemies because sometimes when they see you, they will instantly set off an alarm and in any mission where you cannot get caught, that is an instant fail. Whereas with regular enemies, for example, you kind of have a split second to stun them and stuff like that. But the cameras, you just can't do anything. And even if you shoot them, often that will set off the alarm as well. So the best thing you can do is use Nyx to distract cameras. They'll pretty much just look at him and you can sneak by and that will not set off the alarm at all. Like I said, it is mentioned in the game, but I actually think a lot of people are going to miss it because of where they kind of placed that little tutorial. Now, the next one is a setting. And I actually mentioned this in my previous video as well, but this is definitely something I wish I knew earlier because now that I'm on my second playthrough, I've actually turned this setting off. In this game, there is a lot of slicing that you need to do. That is one of Kay's biggest strengths is slicing things so she can access terminals and stuff like that. And especially late in the game, there is a lot of that that you have to do. Now, the mini game that it gives you is essentially a game of Wordle, which I'll be honest, is kind of fun the first few times you do it, but it does get very repetitive. And if you go into the settings, you can actually just turn this off. And it means that when you slice these things, it will just instantly do it, saving you a lot of time and kind of just getting through those sections. Because like I said, there is some parts of this game where you have to do like 10 of these in a short period of time. And in those moments, it is pretty annoying having to do that mini game. Now, last but not least, something that I definitely wish I knew earlier because I didn't do this at all in my first playthrough is unlocking the electro shock prod before you get to the sort of end game or at least the final sort of third or final quarter because trust me, you are going to need it. Now, this isn't something you guys need to worry about early on. You can't actually get this until you get to a certain point in the game. It's probably in the final third or so of the game. And I don't want to talk spoilers, so I'll avoid using this character's name, but he is one of the available experts and he'll let you craft a shock prod. That means you can stealth kill tougher enemies like the death troopers and patrol guards and stuff like that. Without the shock prod, if you go up and try and stealth them, it will just do nothing at all. And you will essentially just alert them on the spot, which like I said, there are a few missions late on in the game that can be quite a pain 
using if you don't have this shock prod. Now in that expert manual, it tells you exactly what you need to do. You just need a few materials as well as one specific item, which is the NL02 charge emitter. You can find that at this area of the map. It's an Imperial base out on the lake on Akiva. And once you're there, you can just sneak in and in one of these four or five tents, you will find this item in a chest, at which point you guys can upgrade and you will absolutely thank me later. Like I said, without going into spoilers, there is a lot of pretty difficult enemies in the final third or final quarter of the game. And I'm actually kind of shocked that I didn't get this in my first playthrough because it probably would have saved me a good couple of hours of trying to do these stealth missions. But that is it for 10 things that I wish I knew earlier in Star Wars Outlaws, guys. If you guys enjoyed this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. And if you want to see a follow-up to this, because to be honest, this list initially had about 18 things on it and I could easily come up with another 10 now that I'm going into my second playthrough. So if you like this type of content and you want to see more, be sure to leave a comment down below if there's enough comments from you guys. I will definitely do a follow-up of 10 more things that I wish I knew sooner as well. But with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day and may the force be with you always.